So today we want to look at another important topic in corporate or financial reporting, and that is financial instruments. Most students see this particular topic to be a bit complicated and comes with some level of difficulty. But if you follow through this lesson judiciously, at the end of it all, you will be able to comprehend all the principles, all the principles and the concepts that have been outlined in this particular topic. Its first accounting treatment was coined or established in IAS 39. But over the years, the IAS 39 has received some revision and some amendment. Currently, three different accounting standards prescribed the treatment of financial instruments in the books of financial statement of an entity. So we are going to look at these three um, different accounting standards that talks or that's prescribed the accounting treatment of financial instrument. And the first one has to do with what we call IES 32. So we have IES 32. This one talks about the classification and presentation of financial instrument. That is IES 32. You also have IFRS 9, which talks about the recognition and measurement of financial instrument. And we have the last one, IFRS 7, outlines the disclosure requirement of financial instrument in the books of the entity. So this standard, we will go through them judiciously and look at what each of them prescribed in accounting for financial instrument. Before you can better understand this particular financial instrument, you have to look at the definition of some key terms, like what is a financial instrument, and then some other key terms that have been used in the standard. Basically, with this particular topic, you will be looking at how to classify financial instruments, then when it's supposed to be recognized, we will also look at the measurement, that is the initial and the subsequent measurement. We will look at other things this particular topic talks about. Remember that before you can measure a financial instrument, you are supposed to first know how to classify it. If you don't know how to classify a financial instrument, then measuring it will become very difficult because each classification and the way it's supposed to be what to be measured. So without wasting my time, let's look at the definition of the key terms. So with the first one, we want to look at what is financial instrument. And when we say financial instrument, we are basically looking at two things. We are saying that it's a contract that gives rise to two items. So these items are that financial instrument is a contract which gives rise to financial assets of one entity and financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. What it means is that if two entities enter into a contract, for instance, we have RUNAS PLC and then EPLC going into contract. So this is a different entity. This is a different entity going into contract. Assuming that RUNAS is buying shares or is investing in shares in EPLC. So Ronald's POC is buying shares from EPOC. To this instrument, to one of the entities, it will be financial assets. And to the other, it will be financial liability. So in this case, Ronald's POC, who is investing in EPOC, will account for this instrument as what? Financial asset. And then EPOC, from whose um, shares that Ronald's is buying from, will account for this as what? financial liability. So we are saying that with financial instrument, we are saying that it give, it's a contract that gives rise to what to two items. One financial asset of one entity and financial liability of the other entity. Having understood what is financial instrument, you want to look at what is financial asset and what is financial liability. When we say financial asset, we are saying that it's a cash or a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another hot entity or an equity instrument in another entity or to exchange a financial asset for a financial liability under conditions that are potentially favorable so that is about what financial asset an example of financial asset is what we call trade receivable we have trade receivable we have what we call options and we have what we call options and then the last 
it's not it's not insulting. We have several examples of financial assets, but the one I'm going to give you here is going to be equity shares or ordinary investment in equity shares or investment in ordinary um, shares. So this is equity shares. They are the examples of financial assets. So when it comes to financial liability, we are seeing that it's a liability that is contractual obligation to deliver cash or to exchange financial assets or financial liability under conditions that are potentially unfavorable. So when it comes here, the conditions for which the financial asset or liability are being exchanged is unfavorable in this case. But when it comes to financial assets, they, they are favorable. That's the difference. An example of financial liability will probably be trade payables. We probably have trade receivables to trade payables. We have loans. This one can be debenture loans. Yeah. And then we also have redeemable preference shares. Remember that it's not irredeemable preference shares, but redeemable preference shares. What you are supposed to note is that if you want to settle the liability that you have incurred as an entity, it's going to be settled from the owner's equity instrument or owner's ordinary shares. That is where you are going to what you know pay your liability from. Remember that liability plays an obligation on the entity. So whatever you do, you have to what deliver your side of your contract. So that's basically the definition of financial asset and the financial liability and they are examples. We will go deeper into them and look at what the standard prescribed about each of them. Having understood the definition of the key terms in financial instruments, I want to turn our attention to the recognition. When should a financial liability or a financial asset be recognized in the books of the entity? So we are saying that Financial asset or financial liability can only be recognized in the books of the entity when and only when that entity becomes a party to the contractual provisions of the instrument. What it means is that if two parties are coming together with statutory arrangement or any arrangement that is not contractual, then the item that they are being traded should not be classified as either financial asset or financial liability. But an entity can only classify that item that is being traded if the parties becomes a contractual provisions of the instrument. That is when we should recognize financial assets or financial liability in the books of the entity. Then when should we take the financial asset or financial um, liability from the books of the entity? That's the recognition. So you take first look at financial liability. With financial liability, we are seeing that when the contract expires so when the contract expires we can take it we can do recognize the financial asset or when the contract is cancelled when the contract is cancelled we can also um, take the financial liability from the books of the entity and the last one when it is discharged when the parties have performed their respective obligations in the contract we can also remove the financial liability from the books of the entity so with financial liability, it's very easy to de-recognize them from the books of the entity. And when it comes to financial assets, we are saying that we should de-recognize it when the contract has expired. So when the contract has expired, then we de-recognize financial assets. But another way or another condition that is supposed to be met before a financial asset can be transferred or can be removed from the books of the entity is when the risk the risk and then the reward of the ownership has been transferred when the risk and reward of the ownership has been transferred but in this case the standard prescribed other options that is supposed to be incurred before we can say that the risk and reward has been transferred and the standard prescribed what you call the decision tree to identify when the risk and reward of an instrument is transferred or not we are not going deeper into that so basically that is when to recognize and do recognize financial assets and financial liability from the books of what the entity. Now we want to turn our attention to the classification of financial instrument. Please, the classification of financial instrument is very, very important because anything we are going to do subsequently depends on this classification. So let's start with the classification. With here, we are saying that financial instruments can initially be classified into financial assets and then financial liability. We look at the definition of financial asset. We also look at the definition of financial, um, you know, assets. And we also look at the examples. Now, 
in the question when you are provided with a question what are some of the things what are some of the items what are the some of the things in the question that would inform you that this one is a financial asset or this one is a financial liability with financial asset you see words like invest so maybe an entity invest or acquire or you say bought bought or purchased or any other keyword that is synonymous to these words anytime you see these keywords or these terms in a particular um, you know transaction then you know that the instrument in that particular question is what is a financial asset but when it comes to financial ability then we want to look at issue or sold so any other words that are synonymous to issue or sold then we can say that that instrument in the question is also financial what my ability so these are some few ways or some terms that will help you to differentiate between financial assets and then financial liability so we cannot identify financial assets and financial liability in a question now let's look at the classification of financial liability with the classification of financial liability it can basically be classified into two we are saying that a financial liability can be measured at fair value true profit or loss so fair value true profit or loss that is the first classification of financial liability can be classified as a financial liability that is measured at fair value true profit or loss and then the second classification is that financial liability can be measured at fair value true amortized cost so fair value true amortized cost so these are the two classification of financial liabilities but in some questions they will ask you to um, what are some of the terms that are related to these you know classifications to help you identify them for you to know the terms associated with this classification then you have to look at what you call testing of the instrument we have to test the instrument to see if this one is what if uh, this one a financial ability measured at fair value true pure l or at amortized cost and for you to do the test we have two means of carrying out the test it has been prescribed by the by the standard so in this case we have what you call the business model the business model and we have what you call the cash flow characteristics cash flow characteristics test so cash flow characteristics test with this one when we are talking about the business model we are saying that with fair value true pol then we are saying that it should be hold or healed for trading purposes so anytime the financial instrument is being healed for trading purposes then we are saying that it will be fair value true pol in this case we are looking at financial liability but with the cash flow you know characteristics test this one is just the same throughout each of them what i mean is that in this one we are just looking at the cash flow that are embedded in each of what the instrument and in this case it's going to be the principal plus the what plus the interest that is embedded in each of these the instruments but when we come here we are saying that it should be held to what to maturity it should be held to maturity so that is how to test for these two instruments so don't forget that financial ability can be classified under two financial ability that is measured at fair value through pol or measured at what amortized cost and for you to determine that this instrument is at amortized cost then it should be held to what to maturity or this one should be held for trading purposes that is how to test for them so that is the classification of financial liabilities we want to turn our attention to how to classify financial assets how to classify financial assets one thing you're supposed to note is that financial assets can be split into two main assets so it can first be split into two main assets before the classification so in this case we can say we have debt capital debt capital and we also have what you call equity capital right so financial assets can first be split into debt capital and equity capital before we come with what the classification so with the classification 
with the debt capital, it can be classified under three main headings. It can be classified under three main headings. So when we come here, this one can be classified this under two. So we see that debt capital, which is measured at fair value through profit or loss, through profit or loss, or measured at measured at fair value through other comprehensive income. So fair value through other comprehensive income or measured at amortized cost. Amortized cost. And then when we come here, we are saying that an equity capital which is measured at fair value through profit or loss, through profit or loss, and then this one is fair value through other comprehensive income. So that is the classification of financial assets. So you can say that these two classification here or these two types of instruments is the same one over here. But just that this one, the equity capital, we cannot amortize them. So we don't have it to be what amortized. So that is about the financial asset. Financial assets can first be split into debt capital and equity capital. When we see debt capital, we are saying that when the investment is in something like debt loans, then it will fall under debt capital. But if the investment is in ordinary shares of the other entity, like the example I gave earlier one, then that particular financial asset will be treated as what equity capital. In this case, as we test for financial liability, yes, we are supposed to test for what for the classifications for the various instruments so using the business model, using the cash flow characteristics tests. So in this one, the first one, we know that this one should be held for what trading purposes. We also know that this one should be what should be hold to maturity. The only thing we are not familiar with is how to test for the financial asset that is measured at fair value through OCR. In this case, we are saying that the instrument should be available for sale. The instrument should be available for sale. Anytime that is present in the question, then we are saying that it is a debt capital or a financial asset that is what fair value or measured at fair value through OCI. With this one, we said it should be held to what to maturity. And it's the same thing, this one over here. So to conclude, we can basically see that financial assets are classified into what three main headings or into three main categories or into three main what instruments. We have the one financial asset that is what measured at fair value through POL account, measured at fair value through OCI, and measured at what amortized cost. Because this one and this one is just coming because we are splitting it into what debt capital and then equity capital. So in conclusion, we can just say that financial asset is classified under our three main headings. That is the one that is fair value through POL, the one that is fair value through OCI, and then the one that is fair value at, out, at amortized cost. So that is the classification of financial asset and how to test for each of them in case they fall to you in an exam situation or in a question. Now, having understood the classification of financial instrument, we can now look at the measurement of financial instrument. The measurement of financial instrument solely depends on the classification. So if you don't know how to classify financial instruments, you first have to learn that before you can what, measure financial instrument. So we want to look at the measurement of financial instruments. So first, we'll start with financial liability. So initially, we realized that financial liability can be classified under two main headings, with the one that is you know, fair value through POL, and the one that is measured at amortized cost. This is where the classification we look at. So let's look at the initial measurement. With the initial measurement of a financial liability that is measured at fair value through P or L account, initial measurement is supposed to be the fair value. And this fair value is going to be the transaction price. In this case, the transaction price is going to be the price of the instrument in question. The price that the entity is going to pay for the instrument is going to be the transaction price. So to measure your financial liability under this category or under this classification, then it's going to be the fair value and then that fair value is going to be the transaction price. But in case in your trading activities, you incur a cost. So that is transaction cost. And when we say transaction cost, we are saying that it's an incremental cost that is incurred by an entity when the entity is issuing, disposing, or acquiring a financial asset or financial liability. We can also say that there are incremental costs associated with what the acquisition, disposal, 
or issue or financial asset or financial what liability that is transaction cost so in the case that we are dealing with this type of classification and there's a transaction cost with this one you just take it straight away to your pol account as what as an expense in other words you just expense this amount in your pol account you don't capitalize it that is the initial measurement of this type of classification now let's come to the second classification the initial measurement is still the fair value in this case the fair value is going to be the transaction price plus in case you no know, this one we are dealing with financial liability so less transaction cost in case there is transaction cost associated with that particular what instrument we are supposed to work less because in this case we are dealing with a financial liability so that is the initial measurement of these two classifications but sometimes you'll be dealing with some some deep loans which will come with what we call trade discount when there's the trade discount if it is under this classification we treat it like the transaction cost but if it is here we have to add the trade discount if it is under the amortized cost classification then you add the trade discount that is just the initial measurement of what the categories of the classification of financial liability now let's look at subsequent measurement of these classifications with the subsequent measurement when you come here it's very simple you compare the initial fair value of the financial liability with the closing fair value and you take gain or loss to what to the p or l account so the gain or loss on the instrument will be sent to the what the p or l account so when it comes to this type of classification when you come here you compare the initial and then you compare the initial and then the closing balances of the fair value of the instrument and then you take gain or loss towards to your p or l account what it means is that assuming here we come here and then the opening balance that is first january 2022 or 2021 is thousand and then the closing balance is 950 dollars what it means is that i'll compare these two values because one is opening one is closing I'll compare these two values and take in this case this one is the closing so there is what a loss of 50 dollars so this one will become an expense in my pol account in case it's a financial liability that is a measure that fair value through pol account then this one will be sent towards my pol account as an expense so remember that we will take the gain or loss towards to the pol account by comparing the initial or the opening fair value of the instrument and then the closing fair value and take the gain or loss towards to the pol account in case it's a gain you add it and in case it's a loss what do you do be less that is about this classification now let's send our attention to this classification with this one subsequently what we do is that we have to amortize and if you say we want to amortize it's just initial value plus the effective interest then we less what you call interest paid once you do this you get what it's called closing balance over here the result gives you the closing balance and what you do is that you will send this one to your p or l account and then you send this one to your statement of financial position now the difference you will look at how to prepare this amortization schedule and how to get the values of the effective interest and then the interest paid and then the closing balance to be sent to the statement of financial position and then the p or l respectively you will look at that subsequently so what that is the subsequent you know measurement for financial liability that is what classify at amortized cost so we we subsequently what amortized by taking the effective interest rate to your L account and taking the what the closing balance to the statement of financial position so having understood how to measure our financial liability that is the initial measurement and then the subsequent measurement now we want to look at how to measure our financial assets so our financial assets like i said earlier one financial asset can basically if you take the two splitting uh, out we are saying that they can be classified as three main headings so here we are going to do with the three main headings so we have the first one here and then the second and the third so here we said it can be fair value through pol account and then fair value through other comprehensive income other comprehensive income and then the last one is at amortized cost amortized cost so these are the three classification now let's look at the initial measurement so we will look at the initial measurement and then the subsequent measurements like we did for the financial liability the initial measurement of this type of financial asset or this classification is going to be the fair value which is going to basically be the transaction price 
And in this case, in case the transaction comes because you know we've talked about transaction costs already, so I'm not going to waste time here. You have to what the same thing you did under the financial liability, you have to expense it. You have to expense it. You take it directly to your POL account as an expense. You don't add it, you don't capitalize it when we are dealing with this classification of what instrument. Then when we come here, the initial measurement is going to be the fair value, which is basically the transaction price. But in case there's a transaction cost over here, we add. We capitalize this with plus transaction cost. Here we are adding because this is a financial asset. Then when we go to the last classification, it's the same thing as we did over here. So it's going to be the fair value. So it's going to be the fair value, which is going to be the transaction price plus the transaction cost. In case there's there is transaction cost in the question. Remember that to so ask a point there is an item or there is a financial cost in the question, they should know what to do. So if it is type of you know instrument, you don't capitalize the transaction cost, we expense it straight away. But if it is this type of instrument, we have to capitalize the transaction cost. And if it is this type of instrument, you are supposed to also capitalize the what the transaction costs. So now let's move to the subsequent measurement of our financial assets so subsequent measurement of financial asset in this case what we did with the financial ability holds over here as well so we are going to compare the initial fair value of the instrument with the closing fair value and take the gain or loss to what to the pol account so we take the gain or loss to pol account after considering or after comparing the initial value initial fair value with the closing what fair value we will take a practical question that we look at how to treat each of the classifications then you go in for the second one in this place with the same thing but here the gain or loss the gain or loss on the instrument will be sent to our OCI this place will not go to our not go to our POL account it will be sent to our OCI OCI but there are some times where the question will require that you first amortize before you compare the closing and the opening but opening um, fair values Especially when you see a question that contains coupon rates and it contains uh, also an effective interest rate. And that instrument is a fair value through OCI. Then before you can compare the opening and the closing, you have to work, you have to amortize. The instrument is a financial asset that is fair value through OCI. But in the question, it has what we call coupon rate and it also has effective interest rate in the question. If that is the case, before you can compare to see whether there is a gain or loss between the financial, between the fair values, you first have to what, amortize before you compare the closing balance with the opening balance. With these two, you take some questions and then you look at how to treat them. And then with the last one here, with the subsequent measurement, we are seeing that we have to what? We have to amortize. We have to amortize. So in amortization, we said if the initial value plus your, um, what's we, what we call the interest the effective interest then we let our interest what pay to get our what, our closing balance but this place is an asset so with this effective interest you will treat it as finance income but previously the effective interest will be treated as finance cost if you are dealing with what financial liabilities so in this case you will treat the effective interest in our pol account as finance what income or finance um yes finance income and then you will treat the closing balance as our uh, asset in the statement of financial position so that is it. So basically, that is the classification and then measurement of financial assets and then financial liabilities. The next thing we are going to look at under the topic financial instrument is what we call compound instrument. The standard also talks about what we call compound instrument. In this case, we have compound instrument. When we say compound instrument, we are saying that it's an instrument that has two components. An instrument that has what you call the equity component and then the liability component. Liability component. So an instrument that has the equity component and then the liability component. And a typical example of you know compound instrument is convertible bond. So in this case, we are saying that compound instrument is basically an instrument that have two components. That is the equity component and the what the liability component. So in questions, you have a compound instrument given to you, which is basically the equity plus what the liability. That means we want to define our compound instrument using 
algebraic expression, then we are saying that is the equity plus what we have lit. So you'll be given one figure, let's say thousand dollars. But this figure is embedded with what we call the liability component plus the what equity component. Then you are supposed to what get the equity component and get the liability component. And for you to do this, you have to use an accounting you know, concept we call split accounting. And in this case, when the instrument is given to you, they will give you the cash flows. The cash flows, maybe you can have cash flows for one, two, three years. Okay, so the cash flow, let's say this is 100, this is um, 120, and maybe this is 110. These are the cash flows. For first, for you to split the company instrument, you first have to calculate for the liability component. And once you get a liability component and you take it from the company instrument, you can what, get the equity component using what you call split accounting. So in this case, like I was saying, we have before you can get the liability component, you have to use the what the cash flow concept. So what the cash flow is given, it will be given to you. So what the cash flow is given to you, you have to discount them. So here yeah, you will discount all of them using discounting factor. And the discounting factor in this case is going to be one divided by one plus your R always the power n so the r here is basically your rate and then this one is the number of years and this one the one and the one are constant that is your discounting factor so we use this discounting factor to discount all the cash flows so after discount let's say this one after discounting is 80 and this place is 100 and this place is 90. so in this case we are going to get what we call if you add this to this we get 170 so 270. so this is our hot the discounted value after we have discount the cash flows we get this one so this one becomes our liability you know component so anytime we have discount all the cash flows and sum them up then the total will give you your, your liability component so this is 1000 so the this one is too small so assuming our liability component is 950 950 dollars then we can easily get our what, our equity company because we know that our company instrument is thousand of which we don't know the equity company but we know that after discounting the liability component is 950 dollars so in this case our equity component will be what will be 50 dollars now sometimes some questions will come with like how to this liability component is further subscribed to later on by the entity so you have to prepare an amortization schedule depending on what is happening in the question then after getting the liability company, you have to what? You have to further amortize. That is also about what? Compound instruments. The standard also prescribed the treatment of some items, but you'll be looking at them subsequently because they evolved a lot. For example, it's what you call hedge accounting. Hedge accounting. You also have what you call embedded derivatives. And you also have reclassification of financial assets. You will be looking at this one subsequently because they also have their own calculation their own recognition and how to deal with them but one thing that you want to look at is what you call factoring 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 is very very simple and it's important at the financial instrument what it means is that when we say factoring assuming that this is a plc it's a company and this is b plc it's also a company and these are the debtors. So we have debtors of A. So these people are owing A over here. But A has constructed BPLs, which, which is also not a company, to collect the debt for what? For A. So these people are owing A. But A is not directly collecting the money. It's employing another entity or is outsourcing the activity to another entity to, what? to collect the debt on its behalf. When this thing happens, we call it what factory and then the standard prescribe how to what treat such a what such an instrument in case they fall due the commission or the revenue to be recognized by the entity collecting the what the money is what you call um is what you call commission but what it means is that this person will first pay aplc will first pay this entity before some some part of it so assuming they are owing um, one thousand dollars the entity b who is collecting the debt now will pay like 80 percent of it to this entity and then will now go ahead to what collect the money from what the debtors of what of a so that is what we call 
factory. Then you also have what you call treasury shares. Treasury shares. With treasury shares, it's when the entity is what is reacquiring what its own share. That is what treasury shares. You are supposed to remember the definition. So that is about the financial instrument. And then the next thing you want to look at is the disclosure. Disclosure. And remember that the disclosure requirement of financial instrument is coined in IFRS what? In IFRS 7. And it entails a lot also that we are supposed to take our time and go through them judiciously. We have something like risk, risk, we have market risk, we have interest risk, we are supposed to look at them. But basically, the, the disclosure requirement of financial instruments in the books or to the, in the notes of the financial statement will probably be, let's say, the classification of the instrument. The important thing is how the financial instrument was what was measured. But you are supposed to remember that all financial instruments are initially measured at what? Fair value. I hope you saw them when you were doing the initial measurement. And then you also disclose that if it were the transaction price you use or you use any other price in terms of what the transaction price, maybe the market value. And then you also look at how you subsequently measure your what your financial instrument, that is the classifications, and then any other important information that will be required by the users of the financial statement for their decision making purposes. You have to include them in the notes of the financial statement. So basically, these are the few things under financial instruments. What is left with is taking the practical questions to solve under each of the classification that we have looked at. Thank you.